Namaste angels. Thank you for joining, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting on the videos, all the many things that you do to support the videos, my channel and me do appreciate it. Welcome. This is the general reading for, for the period of tomorrow, November 17th through Saturday to come the 23rd of November. So happy birthday to the third Deacon Scorpios and happy birthday to the first Deacon and the Cuspian Sagittarians. This is your week. It looks like it's going to be a good week, but we'll get to that in a second. First, I wanted to talk about what's going on in the Christian calendar. There is nothing going on this week that I would talk about on the Hebrew or Jewish calendar or the Islamic or Muslim calendar. So we're going to go straight into the Christian calendar, beginning with the 18th and the feast day of the dedication of the churches of Saints Peter and Paul. I'm going to franciscanmedia.org for the story of these. And here we go. The story of the dedication of the churches of Saints Peter and Paul. Saint Peter is probably the most famous church in Christendom, massive in scale and a veritable museum of art and architecture. It began on a much humbler scale. Vatican Hill was a simple cemetery where believers gathered at Saint Peter's tomb to pray. In the year 319, Constantine, which equals 1304, 1111, by the way. Constantine built a basilica on the site that stood for more than a thousand years until, despite numerous restorations, it threatened to collapse. In the year 1506, or 66, Pope Julius II ordered it raised and reconstructed, but the new basilica was not completed and dedicated for more than two years centuries. St. Paul's outside the walls stands near the Abbazia del Tre Fontaine, where St. Paul is believed to have been beheaded. The largest church in Rome until St. Peter's was rebuilt, the basilica also rises over the traditional site of the namesake's grave. The most recent edifice was constructed after a fire in the year 1823. The first basilica was also Constantine's doing. Constantine's building projects enticed the first of the, a centuries long parade of pilgrims to Rome. From the time the basilicas were built until the empire crumbled under barbarian invasions, the two churches, although miles apart, were linked by roofed colonnade and marble columns. Peter, the rough fisherman whom Jesus named the rock on which the church is built, and the educated Paul, reformed persecutor of Christians, Roman citizen, and missionary to the Gentiles, are the original odd couple. The major similarity in their faith journeys is the journey's end, both according to tradition died a martyr's death in Rome, Peter on a cross, and Paul beneath the sword. Their combined gifts shaped the early church, and believers have prayed at their tombs from the earliest days. Later in the week, on the 21st, a day that we'll find is of note for another awesome reason, is the feast day of the presentation of Mary. So I'm still on franciscanmedia.org going to that story. Mary's presentation was celebrated in Jerusalem in the sixth century. A church was built there in honor of this mystery. The Eastern church was more interested in the feast, but it does appear in the West in the 11th century. Although the feast at times disappeared from the calendar in the 16th century, it became a feast of the universal church. As with Mary's birth, we read of Mary's presentation in the temple. Only in the apocryphal literature, in what was recognized as an unhistorical account, this book of James tells that Anna and Joaquin, Mary's parents, offered Mary to God in the temple when she was three years old. This was to carry out a promise made to God when Anna was still childless. Though it cannot be proven historically, Mary's presentation 
has an important theological purpose. It continues the impact of the feasts of the Immaculate Conception and of the birth of Mary. It emphasizes that the holiness conferred on Mary from the beginning of her life on earth continued through her early childhood and beyond. It is sometimes difficult for modern Westerners to appreciate a feast like this. The Eastern Church, however, was quite open to this feast and even somewhat insistent about celebrating it. Even though the feast has no basis in history, it stresses an important truth about Mary. From the beginning of her life, she was dedicated to God. She herself became a greater temple than any made by hands. God came to dwell in her in a marvelous manner and sanctified her unique role in God's saving work. At the same time, the magnificence of Mary enriches her children. They, we, too are temples of God and sanctified in order that we might enjoy and share in God's saving work. From there, we're going to move on to the planetary calendar. My nose just started bleeding right in the middle of the reading. That tends to mean or it has meant in the past for me when I've been giving a reading and my nose started bleeding that somebody's trying to come through um, for me to channel for them and they have cancer or they passed of cancer. So that may happen during the reading. That's the warning. My, you can look at my hands because I didn't know what was happening at first. I just felt like on my face. So um, mid-reading, my hands are covered. It's, it's dry very quickly. But my hands are covered in blood. That's because my nose was bleeding. Um, so, yeah, somebody may join us for this reading. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I lost where I was and what I was doing. The planetary calendar. Beginning with November 19th, when on this channel, we will celebrate God the Father, King Osiris. Beginning at, also on that day, beginning at 2.40 a.m., Mars enters Scorpio. So that's pretty cool too. Mars, a ruler of Scorpio, sort of going back home there. I think my nose is still bleeding. I still feel, uh, or my eye might be paranoid though. I don't know, but I still feel... Uh... The following day, on uh, November 20th at 2.12 p.m., Mercury goes direct. So this is the, the, uh, the reason I was saying um, the 21st was also going to be a special day because it'll be the first day where, you know, Mercury, is, for a full day, Mercury is direct. No more retrograde. Um, November 22nd at 9.59 a.m., the sun into Sagittarius, which is why I wished the... Um, First Deacon Sages, a happy birthday. And that's it for this week. So to talk first a little bit about Mars 19th, Mars 19th, <laughs> November 19th and Mars entering Scorpio, what that means. I've gone to www.tarot.com. Mars in Scorpio, intuitive, persistent, and driven. November 18th through January 3rd, 2020. So that's a pretty long transit. Mars feels very at home in Scorpio because in a traditional astrology, Mars was the ruler of Scorpio. It shares an affinity with this sign, giving them the potential to work very well together. Scorpio is about getting to the bottom of things so that they can be completely transformed, while action planet Mars is great at stimulating and provoking change. Tenacity is common with motivated Mars in this fixed sign, and there's greater ability to preserve and work through difficult challenges during this transit. In fact, it has been said that Mars in Scorpio doesn't like doing things the easy way. Resistance is just another obstacle to test Mars' power here. Mars in Scorpio gives us the power to unleash our drive and ambition. In this sign, Mars isn't motivated to compromise or even consider what anyone else has to say. Mars and Scorpio gives us the gift of the ultimate cosmic backbone, causing us to feel totally in charge of our actions. Nobody can control us during this time, and if they try, well, watch out. Our drive to change something in our lives 
through sheer willpower will be through the roof during this period of time. Mars and Scorpio is never afraid to explore the darker, more vulnerable side of life. In fact, this is where Mars and Scorpio thrives. That's why this transit may prompt us to do some psychological self-examination, giving us insight that sets the stage for major transformation. The downside to fiery Mars's time in watery Scorpio is that we may express ourselves with unrelenting aggressiveness or anger. This can be either outright or under the surface and could prolong conflicts and erode relationships. The trick to this transit is being selective about which walls we want to tear down. We can use this energy constructively by taking on projects that help us to redirect our intensity and passion more positively. Mars and Scorpio can feel a lot like we've entered a spiritual boot camp because it helps us to develop our own power. As long as we choose to rise above the shadows, power struggles, revenge, bitterness, and an inability to forgive, we have an opportunity to master these parts of ourselves with courage, discipline, and willpower. This um, article goes on to talk about what it means if you were born with Mars and Scorpio. So some of you may be interested in continuing to read on about that. I am going to move on to the reading, I think, because everybody understands what Mercury retrograde is about, right? Mercury going direct means it will no longer appear in the sky to be traveling backward anymore. And it won't feel in our lives as if to be pulling us backward, which is all good, all positive. Um, however, although it goes direct, it does not leave completely the retrograde zone just yet. It will remain in shadow. You know, like So like post-retrograde shadow through December 7th. However... This is the final Mercury retrograde of the year and of the decade even, right? Because next thing you know, we're going to be in 2020. No more, two nine, no more um, 2019 or no more, you know, those 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's a whole new decade even. So last final Mercury retrograde. But Mercury does remain there in Scorpio um, for a while. Which means we have Mercury and Mars there while Venus has left and entered Sagittarius. I'm just going to say someone who recently passed or who passes um, over like the next two weeks. Because I also saw some passings in my moon reading. Um, someone who passes of, of cancer. I believe it's a female. I'm feeling feminine energy, but we all have both masculine and feminine energy, so it might not be a female. I'm not seeing the actual person. Um, someone who recently passed or passes over this period, they're not. They're currently not well, but they haven't said anything. They haven't told you that they're not well. They're not going to tell you. Um, they, they don't want to talk about their cancer, and they didn't want to like fight it. They just wanted to enjoy life. They didn't want to do chemo and, and all of these things. And so, um, they just want you to know they're fine. I don't know, of course, to whom that applies or for whom that is for, but that's why my nose was bleeding. And the blood's disappearing by itself. Right. I had a, I had blood that was already dry all through here. And now all, all here looks like I've washed my hand. Um, on that note, <laughs> I apologize again for that. I can't help when I slip into, like, I don't know what you want to call it, a zone. What the dice will be coming, um, beginning with sex. So that should heat things up, change the mood. Uh, forget it. And buy shoes. Spirit says no. So some of us, you know, stuck maybe pondering a yes or no question. Answer is no, or no is recommended for you. Massage. I think I'm gonna get one tomorrow, actually. And 29, which is all about spiritual partnership. Could come in handy with the sex. 
going to the cards, I pulled out my <clears throat> Ascended Masters deck because it has Mary in it. And we have a feast day this week of Mary. And she ended up as the overall energy with Nurture Yourself, Mother Mary. So it's this very uh, Earth-like energy. It comes across very Queen of, of Autumn or Queen of Pentacles-like for me. Um, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, maybe particularly significant, but not, of course, not necessarily. This isn't even uh, an actual tarot card, but it just feels very queen of uh, pentacles. In any case, what signs are significant or, or not in your life this week? This is about taking care of you, nurturing yourself. It fits very well with, with massage and sex and 29, spiritual partnership. You know, if it's a healthy one, that could be part of nurturing you too. From the angel tarot, we're beginning this week with the ace of air. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth of a situation and a challenging beginning. I was feeling as I was shuffling the cards, um, actually this whole like overwhelming feeling of put, putting a smile on your face, having a big smile on your face after some challenges, you know, maybe like a, that, you know, so like got them, you come out on top of something. So that's always cool. And the Ace of Air sort of supports that. It's a card of victory. It's a card um, that does represent like having made it to the top of the mountain. So maybe been challenging climbing there. And, you know, even on your way up, you're almost to the top. You may still experience some bumps in the road, but, you know, it's like, Mama, we made it nonetheless. So it's a new beginning on the heels of difficulty um, usually. And that's why it's all about triumph and victory. Ace of Air. Also up right, right behind it, the knight of air, intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed. Take time to carefully review your options. You can come up with creative solutions. The knight of air is a Gemini ruled perhaps by Mercury, right? That's who's going direct this week. Libra or Aquarius or someone likened to those traits or attributes does not have to be an air sign at all. It could be representative of Mercury himself or even Venus, who I mentioned, who is um, the ruler of Libra. And like Mars is the esoteric ruler of the sign of Scorpio, Venus is the esoteric ruler of the sign of Gemini. So that's another reason to be showing up. A lot of air here today. Also, the nine of air upright, expecting the worst self-fulfilling prophecies and sleepless nights. So like I said, I saw challenges, but then I saw people coming out on top. Four of air also upright right behind that. It could be indicative of your need for a break or some rest, maybe so that you can get your mind right, get some clarity and come to some sort of decision about something. It's time to rest or take a vacation. Allow more time before making a decision. Meditation may provide answers. What's interesting is some of the cards that we have here can also be about your need for a break. If you can get one feeling overwhelmed, you've got too much on your plate. You're trying to juggle a bunch of things. Um, some of it could be inclusive of decisions that you have to make. And especially with the two of pentacles sitting atop the seven of cups, both of these cards can be about decisions that have to be made. We got a five of swords over here it can be about conflict. Maybe you are not in conflict with somebody else, but rather you are conflicted because again, you need clarity. You got to make a decision. So there's a lot of that um, going on. A lot of indica indication that some of us may need to, if we're able to take a step back from something or someone, or even take some days off, long weekend or something like that. From the Animal Tarot, the Prince of Summer, romantic, flirtatious, introspective and enchanting, a deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. Things can move very quickly during such whirlwind encounters, so stay balanced right? Balance. Two of Pentacles say, uh, in reverse says that we're maybe we're having difficulty staying balanced. This is reminding us that we need to stay balanced and make decisions, right? I talked about the potential for decisions again with the Two of Pentacles and also with the Seven of Cups. Make those decisions with both your heart and your intellect. So use emotion and water, perhaps like Scorpio, but also logic, communication, clear thought like Mercury, Gemini. Also up right behind the Prince of Summer or Knight of Cups is the Three of Autumn. And we've got a Three of Autumn right here too. Three of Pentacles. It's in reverse, but Three of Pentacles here as well. 
your most satisfying and profitable career comes from following your passions. It's not only your career, really. It's any and everything in your life. Career, relationships, they all are best when you follow your passions. Listening to your heart and doing what brings you joy. Your life purpose is best fulfilled by allowing your talents and true self to shine forth out into the world. Yes, that's true about everything. Three of Autumn for me. Could be about some sort of party of three, maybe even a love triangle. Um, but the Three of Autumn for me, outside from that, is about abundance that is earned. Could be earned as part of a group, some sort of group project, collaboration, partnering. Um, but it does not have to be. It's like you put in some sort of effort, whether it was on this plane or just by way of your karma. And so you're due some sort of abundance uh, in, you know, as an award or reward or repayment. Lastly, from my Keepers of the Light Oracle, I pulled this deck out too because Mary also appears there. I just, you know, was moved to pull out a couple that I thought she may want to show up in. And like I said, she's showing up already in this one. Um, this one has an overall energy of Quan Yin, who's another Mary-like figure. She too was a virgin. She emerged from a, lo a lotus flower. Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved and offer a helping hand. So this one is about nurturing as well, but it's not only nurturing yourself, what like Mary is suggesting that we do this week. That one is more so about nurturing um, everyone that's involved in a given situation and or our life. So let's go to the Rider weight cards that I have here. This um, card, this position will represent us most directly. This one could be our energy too. Um, and there's a lot of pentacles here. So it looks like maybe that is our energy for the week. Um, but it can also be representative of, you know, close friends, family members, work. This card that is, you know, sex surrounding energy. This one is specifically work and finance. And this one is love and relationship. So we've got the page of pentacles in reverse representing us most directly, the two of pentacles in reverse, this representing the surrounding energy, the three of pentacles in reverse for work and finance. Don't get worried and scared about the reversals. It's fine. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> and the seven of cups. I wish this one was reversed, actually. The seven of cups upright uh, in the position of love and relationship. And again, the five of swords also in reverse as the overall energy. I picked it up. The Ace of Wands is upright behind it. So it looks like we finally may be getting over something, maybe making a decision, and then there's a new opportunity, a new start um, right ahead of us. Something about which we are passionate. Um, so something we want to do could even be a job or, you know, person, relationship, something in, with which we could fall in love. And like I said, like I was seeing as I was shuffling these cards, starting in a place of maybe conflict, difficulty, challenge, and then at the end of it, big smile on your face as if, you know, you have overcome, you got them by the balls. If it's somebody that was trying to mess with you, that was that, with whom you were in conflict, like it's about coming out on top at the end of it. So the page of pentacles in reverse. This card can be about, yeah, you need for focus, need again, maybe for possibly some sort of break or whatever so that we can meditate, get clarity, you know, sit by ourselves, think about something. We could be very easily distracted when this card is showing up. And just because we're focused and we're trying to do so many things, right? We're juggling our, our attention. We're even juggling. And so when you're trying to, focus on many, many different things, you end up usually not focusing on any. And it could just mean that we need to put forth more energy or more effort toward keeping ourselves organized and keeping focus. Or that again, we need to take a step back from it all, you know, until we can sort of maybe get that massage <laughs> that popped up in the dice and, you know, come back a little bit more peaceful and calm and figure things out. Or um, change up your usual routine and, like, do something a little bit differently. Like, maybe reprioritize 
some things when this card shows up. It's sitting here above the work and finance position where we have the three of pentacles in reverse and the um, page of pentacles in reverse can mean that we have a heavy workload, you know, so we're trying to juggle stuff there too. It's like every aspect of your life, you're really trying to uh, juggle a bunch of things. You might be feeling overwhelmed at work when that shows up and you just got to try like, you know, to, if you're in a position to seek help or to accept help from others, maybe to collaborate right on something then you just take advantage of that and you know do the best you can otherwise and don't try to do stuff that you're incapable of doing like if you have to put something down in order to finish one thing at a time and you're able to do that at your work if that's permissible then do that like you know if you're feeling overwhelmed because if you try to work on a whole bunch of things like you have to do a whole bunch of stuff is not as good as doing you know one thing two things three things completely right in finances, if you're in the mood to play around, you know, maybe have some fun, throw caution into the wind a little bit, maybe even do some gambling or something like that. Um, me, and my, you know, me and my own girl from my, my friend, we were just talking about going to Atlantic City, you know, like Atlantic City, Vegas, something like that. You're in the mood to have some fun. That's okay. You can do that. But just make sure that, you know, it's done in a responsible manner. Don't play with anything that you can't afford to lose. Like sometimes you guys will hear me warn people depending upon what cards come up. Don't loan anybody any money that you may need to pay your own bills with. It's sort of that type of thing here too. Especially with the two of pentacles here, you know, not only next to the page of pentacles, but crossing the three of pentacles in reverse because when the two of pentacles in rever is in reverse as it relates to work, it can be talking to you, well, not work really, but like your finances, that sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. So again, if you need money, I... Yes, I understand you need a break. Um, and yes, I'm saying you can afford to do it and you should do it. I'm just saying do it responsibly. Like don't do it in a case where now I spent my money, uh, my, my rent money on, you know, partying because I felt overwhelmed. That That's not responsible. That's not smart. There's a way for you to be able to take a step back from the world and have a bit of a good time and pay your rent and, you know, find some peace and clarity of mind without, you know, make digging a deeper hole for yourself so that's that's the way we want to go um same thing is going on in, in terms of work you may be feeling overwhelmed you know you got too many projects to do at work just try not to accept too many things yes you want to impress people you want to impress the boss but don't try to like overcommit to stuff that, that you know and accept things on your plate that you are not fit to handle because that's not going to come out well if you want to impress the boss it doesn't look good for you to be sitting there drowning and a bunch of things that you can't complete. So be careful of that. In love, all these things that you're focused on, that you know you got your mind on, that you're feeling overwhelmed by, could be taking your attentions away from your mate, um, you know, or the, the object of your affection. Somebody you're trying to date or something like that. You're not giving them any um, attention. If that's the case, if you can't afford to give them any attention right now, whatever, at least communicate what is happening. You know, hey. I'm overwhelmed. I got a bunch of stuff. Can we take a break? You know, I'm still interested. I'll call you, you know, we'll get up or whatever like that. Like keep the, the um, stream of communication flowing. If you're single and looking, or at least you think that you want to be single, but I mean, you, you're single and you think that you want to be looking, you think you want to commit a relationship, but you know, you too are overwhelmed. You got to think about, you know, whether or not you have the time and energy and true desire to have a relationship. Remember the card we just saw, the Three of Pentacles under here? This is also a Three of Pentacles sitting next to your love and relationship. What do you truly desire? What do you truly want? Because if you're filling your time constantly um, with work and other distractions and things to keep yourself overwhelmed, then is there room for a partner? Do you really want a partner? Or are you subconsciously you know, filling up your own roster so that you don't have time for one. So that's something that needs to be thought about. And particularly, I'm going to say with the Seven of Cups sitting here in the position of love and relationship, because that is a card that speaks about options, um, when it, particularly when it's upright. Like I was saying, I wish this one was reversed because it would mean like we had it figured out. What do I want in terms of love 
for myself. What kind of relationship am I out for? But when it's upright, we, we're sort of still trying to figure it out. Where we dig that feeling, that you know, that rush that you get when you first meet somebody, and it's all hot and heavy. You know, it's all Knight of Cups and <laughs> and you know, Ace of Wands, the Rod. The wand, you get in the wand, and it's all good in the beginning. But every relationship, even soulmate relationships, you know, these hot and tense, even they begin to calm, you know, down. Um, that that intensity falls back, you know, for a moment. So we can't fall in love with just the rush, and we got to consider, you know, in whom are we genuinely interested when we got a bunch of options and we're trying to figure it out we're trying to make a decision so that's what that can mean seven of cups for me can also be about one night stands and we did have sex in the dice so some of us may be considering something like that you know no judgment from me i'm just telling you what it is that could be something that you're thinking about maybe you're doing quite a bit of that and that's and it's beginning to be overwhelming to you like okay now i've got too many partners i got too many people that i'm dealing with and you know, ooh, maybe I didn't want this. Like, it was fun at first because of that rush, and now it's not so fun. Now I don't want all these people. Now what? You know, that sort of thing. This is going to require some evaluation and honesty with, you know, again, the people we're dealing with and with ourselves, too, again, of, of what we want and stuff. I think I th skipped over the Three of Pentacles because I spoke about, spoke about work, but I don't remember speaking about the Three of Pentacles specifically as it relates to work. It's good. And like I said, the three of pentacles for me is about abundance that is earned. And whether it's in reverse or upright, that's still the case. It is still a good omen as far as I'm concerned as it relates to work. And it's a time of fertility when the three of pentacles shows up, um, particularly in reverse. So that can mean something for your family or you can be in this position of work. It can mean something for your job. And it tends to, as long as you don't, because you're feeling overwhelmed, start doing, you know, crappy work all of a sudden and, you know, low quality work, inferior work, then things at work should be going good for you. Or, and if they're not already in the very near future, they're going, you know, they're going to begin to. So you can expect that this week. And probably I'm going to say beginning Wednesday for those who are not yet experiencing it. Wednesday, Thursday, maybe in particular, that's when the moon will be in Virgo. That could be what all these pentacles are about is what I'm feeling. That's when it will start to happen for you. In terms of your finances, yeah, money should be going well too. Things should be all right there. But like I said, abundance that is earned. So it's about what you put out, right? Whether it's a labor, a physical labor down here, or it's, you know, something having to do in the spiritual realms and your karma, what are you putting out? Because it could be, and it likely is, proportionate to what you're putting out is what you're receiving. So if you are only um, wishing for and working toward, you know, change, doing <laughs> doing something strange for some change, then that's what you're going to get. You, you know, you have a, a mindset and um, the power behind it, the action behind it, think Mars and Scorpio, right? The action behind it to pull a greater haul, then that is what you will be manifesting. Three of Pentacles very much about manifestation again and the law of attraction. Threes in general also about um, creativity abundance so like and then together creativity coming up with creative ways to help to bring about your own abundance so it all it goes back again to what you put into your work in order to bring about the outcome that you um wish to have on a seeking so i've just put the cards that were in this spread on top here to the later if i decide to pull something from this deck it'll be from the back but in the meantime we're going to go on to another spread uh, probably, yeah, I was going to say I'll probably take these away. Let me just take them away. Well, I'm going to use these. Crowning the masculine. Surrounding him this week. Masculine subconscious. Crowning the feminine. Surrounding her this week. Feminine subconscious. Crowning the two. With the root, foundation, and the heart of the matter. 
And again, the overall energy this week was Ace of Air. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations. Seeing the truth in the, of a situation and a challenging beginning. It's a beginning nonetheless. Let's turn it around to the positive. But yes, I forgot to say that the Ace of Air is also about getting to the truth of the matter. Ace of Swords. Crowning the Masculine. Very appropriate. The King of Fire. You know, the King of Fire, or King of Wands, is the quintessential divine masculine of the tarot. That's why I said very appropriate. He is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. He could be Mars. That could be why he's here. He could be rep here representing Mars, or even... Jupiter, the king of fire, or wands, is motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Accept advice from someone creative. Surrounding the masculine. More fire. The ten of fire. Too much work. Accept help from others. Life is out of balance. And that can cause stress-related health concerns. So again, we saw in the last spread that you might be overwhelmed. So maybe particularly the masculine, just feeling overwhelmed, too much going on. Like he always carries, you know, the brunt of a situation or a relationship or something. And there's a need to lay down his burdens or to find more balance in his life. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So you got to find balance. A masculine subconscious, the five of air. So we had a five of air as an overall energy in the other deck. There's one here too. Five of swords. An unwise choice. Learn what you can from this situation. Review everyone's motives. Particularly in this position of the masculine subconscious, this can be about the masculine being conflicted as that other um, overall energy suggested before too. Speaking of balance and fire. <laughs> Crowning the Feminine, this is Major Arcana card 14, which is called Balance in this deck, but it's actually Temperance in the traditional tarot, represents the sign of Sagittarius. So again, Jupiter. The need for balance and moderation, cooperation and compromise, wait for perfect timing, balance all about, again, healing, restoration, being made whole, where something was lacking, where something had been lost, was stolen or whatever. It's like being put back. And that could be tangible things or that could be intangible things like energy being restored after a break, you know, clarity coming in. All of these things made possible by temperance always gives me Aquarius feels too. So not only a Sagittarius, but an Aquarius may be particularly um, significant this week because for me, this is a water bearer and I don't care what anybody else says. He's just an angel standing in water, pouring water between two vessels. That's a water bearer. Surrounding the feminine. Speaking of air and the sign of Aquarius, the aid of air, an illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence, being afraid to take action. Any of air can be about fear, could be about a feeling of restriction, stuckness, maybe again stuck, trapped in this energy of I don't know what to do because I feel overwhelmed. Whether it's at your work, again, your relationships, your friendships, your family situations, whatever's going on, combinations of those. So I, I feel stuck, I feel trapped because I don't, I don't know how I can get out of the drama or how I can get out of this feeling of um, being, I'm being buried in all that I have to do, all that I'm trying to juggle and handle. Feminine subconscious. However, good news on the way with the aid of fire. This is the universe beginning to, you know, shift things around and fix things for you on your behalf behind the scenes. It's also a card of communication. So you may be receiving a communication, putting out a communication that helps to, you know, begin to heal everything. Events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things are happening at once. It's a very Jupiter energy for me. Um, the number eight is representative of karma. Jupiter, the god and planet of karma. Crowning. Major Arcana card one, the magician, which represents for me the planet Mercury in the sign of Gemini. It's all about manifestation. You are ready. You have the resources or the ability to manifest them is light and life is magical. So it's again about what energy we're going to put out, what thoughts we're going to put out towards what we want. That's going to be what we're going to be receiving this week. At the root foundation, the six of water. So 
this thing that we're trying to manifest or this situation we're trying to manifest, the relationship or energy may have something to do with a soulmate and or a child and or something from our past that's being sort of revived. Memories from your history or childhood. Issues regarding children romanticizing the past. And at the heart of the matter is what? It's another six. The six of earth. Gifts of money, time, or effort. New career opportunities and receiving a loan or paying off debts. So again, this is about some sort of assistance coming in. I think it's, it's crossing temperance. I think it's in part about temperance and recovery for the feminine, restoration for the feminine, something you didn't have, you lost, or again, you were lacking, you are getting. This could be actual money coming in, a grant, a scholarship, some sort of help, credit, Somebody, you know, gives you something. They're like, don't worry about it. I got you. It's that sort of thing. It's very Venus. And Venus is the planet and goddess of abundance and love. These are her, all her signs are represented here. Here's her scales of balance or justice. And um, the energy of Libra back there. There's a bunch of like scattered air. It looks very crazy. I always say that's Gemini. <laughs> No offense to the Geminis. I myself am a Gemini sun. Gemini Mercury, Gemini Venus, whole bunch of Gemini. So yeah, it just it is what it is. It looks like Gemini. It's a bunch of crazy air. And of course, all this green, the shrubbery is representative of the energy of Taurus for me. So um, as it relates to love and relationships, to me, this is a card of unconditional love, even when between strangers, you know, you passing somebody on the street, they have their cup out, you give them a dollar. That's an act of unconditional love, even if you don't know that person. Because without agenda, without, you know, wanting something in return, you are giving of yourself to another person. So it can happen in relationships too. You exchange, you know, energy of love without wanting anything else. Just genuine, unconditional love. I'm going to further clarify these with the angel tarot though. Let's see what else comes up. And the overall energy is the Prince of Summer or the Knight of Cups. The top, the King of Fire is the Three of Fire, Three of Spring. Stop to take time to review and to make long-term plans, capitalizing upon your past successes. It's appropriate to pat yourself on the back for all of your accomplishments, but you may also need patience for the next phase to play out. So this is something on the horizon, about to come through. We're, it's coming because we've earned it. It's coming because we're deserving of it. But even if we begin to see it trickle in or begin to um, benefit from whatever this thing is, whether it's money, relationship, whatever is coming, um, the whole picture, the whole thing isn't here yet. And there may still be some required, some work required of us. Again, the three... Um, could be representative of some sort of collaboration, a party of three, maybe even a love triangle. So maybe that's why things aren't completely coming together yet. There's still three people involved in a relationship. We want to only ultimately end up with only two, um, but something's moving. And it may be directly connected to um, whomever the King of Wands represents. And they may be further directly, again, a fire sign, but not necessarily. Um, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Surrounding the masculine atop the ten of fire. It's the eight of winter. Isn't the feminines right here too? Her eight of swords is it's right here. I'm pretty sure. So it's sort of mirroring. The masculine has an eight of swords mirroring the feminines. It's so easy to convince yourself that you're trapped when you really aren't. Trust that God will lift you to new heights and give you a greater sense of self-confidence if you first affirm your freedom. And masculine, I think for you, this is having a lot to do with your work and whatever that means, whether it's, you know, your physical work, your job, and you needing to add some time in there for play or other thing, other work that you do, other labors that you do 
for yourself, your loved ones, your family, and you're just trying to, you're just carrying too much and not including enough uh, you time in what you're doing. And you're thinking that you have to do it that way and that you're stuck in that and you are not is what this card, these two cards show up to tell you to do. In fact, um, you could end up making yourself sick if you continue trying to do this, like high blood pressure or something. So you may want to chill. Masculine subconscious atop the five of air, or five of swords, the eight of summer. You feel that there's more to life than what you're living. So it's time to move on. You may be moving from a situation that isn't good for you, or perhaps you're being drawn to what would make you happy. Either way, you're in control. Some, some of you want to move on from being conflicted, move on from a conflict with somebody else, from this energy of being stuck, from this energy of overwhelmness, maybe even from, again, a, a party of three situation, inclusive of love triangles. Crowning the feminine, atop major arcana card temperance, is another two of autumns. We had a two of autumn, a two of pentacles in our first spread. Here's another one. It is that it's about balance, and it's sitting here atop this card called balance, even though it is temperance. So that's what's really important this week for the feminine is balance. You may be under stress because of multiple jobs or too many responsibilities for one person to manage. It's important to balance your work and your personal life and to bring a spirit of fun to all you do. So again, temperance wants to help us to get our energy balanced back out, to get restored, to get healed. It brings a very healing energy to us that's karmic. Atop the eight of swords that mirrors the masculine's eight of swords is the six of swords or winter. Times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let the past go and embrace the happier times ahead. So this is exactly what I saw as I was shuffling. Again, letting, experiencing challenging times, but by the end of it, by the end of the week, I guess too, um, a smile on your face, right? Happier times ahead. Somebody may have even been stuck physically in terms of travel, you know, like you can't get out of the city you're trying to get out of or wherever. You've been, you're stuck. Oh, we're, we're grounded. The plane's grounded or whatever. Because um, the six of winter can be about travel and Mercury, which will still be <laughs> retrograde until the 20th, through the 20th, so until the 21st of this week, which is most of the week, um, controls travel. And so it can cause delays. It can cause problems. Somebody may be physically um, stuck or, you know, your vacation plans, you're stuck not seeming to work, but by the end of the week, things falling into place. Feminine subconscious atop the eight of fire, the sun, everything works out in the end. Major Arcana card 19, the sun, because again, the universe is working behind the scenes on your behalf and your good karma is paying off with this number eight here. Major Arcana card 19, the sun also represents the sign of Sagittarius like temperance does. So Sagittarius, again, may be very um, important. The, this could be coming up also, the sun, in connection to the cancer that I was feeling. I said it felt like a feminine energy showing up here on the side of the feminine. Sometimes the sun shows up for me in relation to um, a need for, you know, some sort of x-rays, radiation, chemo, right, um, MRI. Other people could be suffering from other types of hurt and um, maybe surgery and stuff too. With the swords and knives, people could be um, undergoing other surgery this week and that too uh, working out well. Health issues on the part of um, a feminine energy, maybe more specifically a female working out well. Or there could be a female or feminine who is feeling extra bogged down and overwhelmed because somebody in close to them is dealing with medical issues. And so they're like trying to do everything because this other person is not well and they can't do anything and everything's on you, on them. That gets better this week too. That gets better this week too. Sun also about abundance in general that's coming to you, especially here atop the eight of fire and or eight of wands 
and it would be good news in terms of communications that you receive, regardless of how they are received. Um, there was something else I was getting. I lost it. So let me go on to here. Uh, uh, crowning atop the magician. Very nice. We're going to talk about manifesting something good this week. The Ace of Autumn. You can expect a windfall of abundance, such as money, timely insistence, a serendipitous meeting, or rewarding advice. You may be offered a fabulous new job or promotion or the prospect of a profitable business venture or investment. So this is the pentacles energy again. Like I was saying, I felt before with the last spread that toward the middle of the week, um, the 20th, I think, and the 21st, I think it's Wednesday and Thursday, when the moon is in Virgo is when this abundance would start to come in. Um, so now with this, with more pentacles, more potentially Virgo energy showing up, um, it's just feeling like that stronger for me. But again, we have to, we put in the effort, we manifest it with it sitting here atop the magician. So um, it's all about you. And it doesn't have to be money. This is abundance. This is the Ace of Autumn representative of abundance. So whatever it is that you want, that you desire in your life in terms of abundance, you are manifesting it with the Ace of um, Pentacles sitting here atop the magician. At the root, atop the Six of Cups, Major Arcana card 12, Awakening, which is the hanged man in the traditional tarot, represents the planet Neptune and the sign of Pisces, which it rules. Look at things in a different way and all will make sense. Don't worry if your progress is halted temporarily. Things will soon start moving again. And it's another three, right? 12 equals three. So again, it could have something to do with a party of three, maybe even a love triangle, but not necessarily. But for some people, it, it, I'm sure it will be. And again, I just spoke of delays and feeling stuck um, it, it, with regard to these two positions here. And so this is what it's crossing. It's saying, yes, you're feeling stuck. It's temporary. This is a reminder. It is temporary. You will get out. Now, in the meantime, while you're stuck, that's a perfect time to consider as much as you can every perspective that is visible to you. And at the heart of the matter, atop the six of earth, the six of pentacles is the 10 of pentacles or 10 of autumn. Contentment comes from knowing that your finances are secure and your family's material needs are taken care of. It's important to honor traditions and to have pride in your heritage and the accomplishments of your ancestors. Somebody um, probably gets some sort of inheritance. Maybe you've been waiting for it for a while. It was delayed. Maybe it finally comes in some inheritance or something that somebody left you that has passed on. Um, for others, there's some other kind of abundance coming into a family. And it may just be calm. Like there may have been a lot of infighting in a family, arguments, conflict, drama. And so family healing with temperance and balance coming in, the family healing and being restored and being able to you know, sit down together maybe for a meal or something. And that's the blessing of abundance that comes in. Um, for others, it could be it's a whole family coming into some 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 sort of material uh, and or financial abundance. So, you know, it could be some sort of income that from which everybody can benefit or everybody will benefit. Maybe if I get it, you get it. You know, like you every whatever's mine is yours, or something like that. Or maybe we're each each child because the six of cups again can be about children. Even grown children. Um, so they could be about siblings. Maybe siblings each getting some sort of inheritance from mommy and or daddy. Something like that coming in. Um, also, I'm feeling some potential additions to families this week. Again, with the parties of three. Maybe somebody's giving birth. Somebody's having a baby. Or getting a pet. Or um, somebody's moving in. or move Like, you know, a friend is moving in. A roommate or something addition to family however you go about it maybe somebody's getting engaged somebody's getting married and so there's new members of the family too further to this let's do some advice for each from each deck and from the two oracle decks that i've chosen for this week for the advice again my keepers of the light oracle with an overall energy of Kuan Yin, care and compassion. 
Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved and offer a helping hand. And from the Ascendant Master deck, Nurture Yourself, Mother Mary. Um, from the Ascendant Master deck, Flow of Prosperity, Lakshmi. So this is another, you know, very strong Ace of Pentacles type of energy for the masculine here. So you're getting it doubly. Um, there is abundance this week. It can come at any time, but again, I just, I feel um, probably Wednesday is when something comes in. Maybe a check arrives in your mail or something on Wednesday, a phone call that changes a lot and at least gives you um, a vantage point, you know, a new perspective where you can see on the horizon, like, okay, well, I don't have all of the abundance that I'm going to have yet, but I can see it coming in now, right? It's at least a three of wands type of situation flow of prosperity for the feminine choose peace this came up for the feminine in the um the moon reading that i did the taurus moon reading also and yeah it's about like picking your battles and letting go of drama and moving beyond energy of you know feeling stuck and having difficulties with people and stuff just choose peace where you don't have to fight where you don't have to make a big deal about something where you don't have to feel overwhelmed and, and challenge yourself. Don't, <laughs> don't Pe choose peace can mean your own peace of mind in general too. Not necessarily just peace with somebody else from the keepers of the light Oracle to the masculine Bridget. It's more fire energy, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, inner strength. So particularly Leo, because major arcana card strength in the tower represents the sign of Leo move back to wholeness recognize that you have the power this is talking about manifestation also for the feminine speak as i'm saying the word manifestation isis magic manifesting your dreams visions and goals are becoming reality stay focused from the angel tarot to the masculine major arcana card five unity or the hierophant which represents the sign of taurus can be about your need to rid yourself of some people, places, and things in your cipher, right? You got the Eight of Cups here. It can be about walking away from something. The Eight of Winter where you're feeling stuck um, or trapped in a situation or relationship or fearful of, of moving on. You don't, you, know, you lack confidence and stuff. Um, and the Three of Wands about something, you know, that's growing, growth and expansion around you and you may need to change your environment because of that right people places and things with which you surround yourself need to better align with your current vibration that's what the hierophant tends to be about but for me it can also be about a higher institutions as they say uh college um you know organizations large government buildings and situ business with with government entities agencies contracts signing contracts and things including marriage contracts engagement uh, deepening a commitment whether it is business partnership or um, romantic Be beginning a commitment entering a relationship we did see um 29 in the dice this week that's all about spiritual partnerships so again whether it's friendship business or romantic that can be the things that the hierophant is about and maybe specifically involving a taurian for the feminine from the angel tarot the seven of air seven of swords plan the need revision more going on than meets the eye and poor timing so i said I, I mentioned somewhere like feeling that something was stolen from you taken from you or there was a void um and in relation to balance so something that was previously lost or lacking um and maybe even physically taken like by theft again coming back this week restore this week return to you it might not be directly like if you don't get the actual item or thing if it was an actual thing or item back but like the equivalent so sort of like how karma's doled out it's not always exacting it's not always like the same thing that you did to somebody else is what happens to you but you get back you know the value 
from the masculine, from the um, animal tarot to the masculine, the six of spring to another card of victory. You may receive a promotion, be chosen for a scholarship, or find that you're singled out for special recognition. You've done an amazing job and you deserve all of the attention. Six of um, spring is a card of victory, triumph, you know, you getting a raise, a promotion, a shout out. It's it's a positive card. And feminine, lastly for you again, the end of difficulty showing up with the 10 of winter. It's the end of a career path, project, or relationship. And that brings feelings of mixed joy and sadness, relief and disappointment. Put aside your fears about these changes and trust that a brighter future awaits. This is exactly what I was talking about. Maybe a frown in the beginning and then a smile in the end. You know, all... All's well that ends well, as they say. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the general reading. I will be back with love. And something else I want to do, I think, um, for King Osiris on the 19th. We'll, we'll see how I do that. Thank you again for liking the video. Please do hit the like button, subscribe button, the bell button. Uh, if you're interested in a private reading from me, you can check out the information in the description box. Also, merchandise, energy healing, all of that will be in the description box for you. And I thank you. Namaste.